Welcome back to the Pipe Dreams Podcast. We're the True Brothers. Today we're talking about specifically the relationship between Alan Harrelson of the Pipe Cottage YouTube channel and his conversion to the Catholic faith and Dry Creek Wrangler School, as I'm sure I'm sure everyone knows of these two channels. If not, go check them out. Of Dwayne of Dry Creek Wrangler School. Um, and the conflict in their relationship. And we're just going to be talking about how it's almost like a, just a natural thing whenever... Well, we'll get into that. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the podcast. Welcome back with the True Brothers. Let's get into the topic today. What are we doing today? How faiths unfold. Yeah, so we're kind of just talking about how at the most basic level, there are these important differences between the Catholic religion, Catholicism, and Protestantism. Protestantism, essentially protesting, is the whole Protestant part. Protesting, Protestant, Protestant. It's church. And it's, it's kind of like a... It's not even a church. It's multiple, I think it's 38,000 different denominations. 3,000? It's into the tens of thousands. Didn't know that. Well, yeah, that's... Um, that was a couple hundred. That was like a few years ago. A study came out on how many there actually are. And, you know, we're kind of getting off at the, the rails right here at the beginning, but that's kind of like the whole point is that the Protestantism is founded just in its name is in protesting the church, a church. And so it's everyone's interpretation. As soon as you disagree with the main interpretation, you go to start your own church. As soon as you disagree with that one, you start your new one. That's why there's so many offshoots. So there was Catholicism. Well, hold on. So like a lot of these churches that I was just having a conversation with someone at work, a lot of people, as soon as there's something they don't agree with, see a lot of people, I think, they choose a church that revolves around their lifestyle. Yeah. Which is the opposite of most people. You should choose a church and revolve, the true church, and revolve your life around that. Correct. That's what you should be doing. Yeah. Instead of being like, oh, I don't agree with that, so let's go start a new church. And then that's how you have, whatever, 38,000 some churches. Yeah, well, the idea is that you you find the truth in your life, and then you make your life based on the truth. That's, a, that's basically the whole point of like the whole religious thing is you find the truth, and that that's a specific religion. And all of your decisions in life are in line with that. If you don't have that, then you have the opposite, and that is you have your way, and you're just trying to find different... Chaos. It's kind of chaotic, (laughs) but it's basically just worship of yourself. Yeah. You think, I want to believe this, 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 and this. Now I'm going to go out and try to find a group of people that are doing that. Mm -hmm. That's not the... Okay, right off the front. There are a lot of devout Protestants that were raised in some denomination of the Protestant church knows the Bible front and back. Yeah. But then it comes down to which Bible? What, whose interpretation? Um, and yeah, whose authority created that canon of scripture? What is the true Bible? Yeah, and then we can get that in today. I got a bunch of books here as well. Um, you know, my, my we'll recommendations. We'll talk about it at the end. Yeah, we'll get to that at the end. Um, one, two, I got like 10 books there. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's even on the screen. Yeah. Probably not. Uh, but we'll get to that in near the end. That's the main issue is, starting at the very beginning, interpretation of scripture and things like that. And like, and what scripture? But uh, let's just start with like the first point is that Pipe Cottage, the YouTube channel, Alan, Alan Harrison. Harrelson, just converted the Catholic Church. And you know, it, he was pretty close with Dry Creek Wrangler School, Dwayne over there on his YouTube channel. And I, we've been fans of both these mm-hmm. guys. Huge fans of both. A lot of good pipe um, talk with them. Anything from the masculine Christian sphere, we're huge fans of. Mm-hmm. Now we also understand that um, th- there's just the issue whenever you get into the realm of Protestantism because it becomes very subjective. For one specific reason, I'll mention this first. If you're not a part of, like, the Catholic Church specifically, you don't have a specific interpretation of the scriptures. So go out and buy this book. (laughs) (laughs) This is the Catechism of the Catholic Church. This has basically the correct interpretation in the Bible of what we believe about everything. 
everything that is like most like the most important things in scripture like objective truths there are things that the catholic church allows us to kind of just like have up to our own interpretation but this is thousands of years of the the greatest minds in western civilization not even just western civilization just any cardinal any catholic cardinal bishop theologian philosopher uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Go out and get yourself a copy. Uh, it's, it's it's a big one. I read it uh, whenever I really got into it, like whenever I was like 21. Where was I even going with that? Basically, there's like the differences between the Catholics and the Protestants is where Catholics have to form their whole world around a an objective order. Yeah, Alan Harrison is Catholic. He's in the process of being Catholic. And Dry Creek Wrangler, Dwayne, is a devout Protestant. That's the yeah. clash. And that's the clash. Yeah. And um, we're just going to get into this. And if you, if, if you have any questions or anything, just <clears throat> interrupt. But I think that we're just going to be making a very basic and quick pitch for the Catholic religion. Because for the first 1,500 years, roughly, there was no Protestant religion. It was just Catholic. And, of course, there's the orthodox christian offshoots of like serbian orthodox russian orthodox and all these like state religions in the east that's like a whole nother conversation but what most what we're talking about here is the tradition of the apostles before the bible was even created there was a church and so what's most important is that there was the church for the first couple hundred years established by the apostles of laying hands on their su successors anointing them to be their successors and then so every priest in the catholic church today every bishop every cardinal has had hands of a successor of saint peter or any of the other you know the other bishops placed on them that is where their their authority comes from which is huge which jesus uh, also places hand like from yeah jesus, jesus anointed peter peter anointed the apostles the apostles appointed successors and those successors appointed priests, bishops, and it's the continuation of the entire priesthood up until the present day. And those priests anointed us to be a part of the laity mm -hmm. in the Catholic Church during our confirmation. They baptized us, gave us our first communions. They give communion every Sunday, um, confirm us, marry us, and then give holy orders if you were to become a priest. So it's the same process. So that's that apostolic secession succession uh that is in the catholic church that no other church has the or okay before i even say that the orthodox do have a claim there's a whole argument about that and then the anglicans somewhat but starting with luther in the 15 uh the 1500s was sort of the, the first rejection of a lot of like the church as we know it um just scripture alone faith alone we get into all these issues and so let's just talk about here like i think the biggest question is why are people turning to the catholic faith because if anyone's been on the internet for any a year or more you'll probably see the trend of a lot of the intellectual the into intellectual class beginning to convert to the catholic church or at least like enter that realm probably starting with like jordan peterson opening people's minds in like 2015, 2016. And it's just been a huge acceleration since then. Why is this happening? Western civilization, at least, if we just look at this whole thing as Western civilization, it was essentially started by the Catholic Church. The Roman Empire fell late 300s, early 400s. And the Catholic Church is, is the main institution that survived the fall of the Roman Empire. And in the dark ages, as historian calls it, of the West of Western of the Western Roman Empire, the Catholic Church anointed kings of the of the Germanic barbarians that came in and everything that took place from the four hundreds, the five hundreds, the six hundreds, the seven hundreds, and it was an establishment of Christendom, of establishing Catholic monarchs of all of these what we now call countries, like the Kingdom of the Franks became Francia, which is now modern-day France. Like Examples like that, where they were all Catholic kingdoms, 
And the Pope was essentially like in charge of creating the Pope, the Catholic Church, creating Western civilization as we know today. And so and then ending with, not ending, leading up to the anointing of the Holy Roman Emperor in the year 800, Charlemagne, Emperor Charlemagne, the first Holy Roman Emperor to kind of reunite Western civilization. And, you know, there's a lot of politics involved with a lot of that, a lot of marriage contracts and the border dis disputes and whatnot. But essentially the Roman Holy Roman Emperor ended with <clears throat> Napoleon. So it's almost just like recently that we don't have an empire of the West. But what, what I'm saying here is that Protestantism never really united a civilization. Our civilization, Western civilization, was started with the Catholic Church. It was held together with the Catholic Church. Catholic means universal. It's a uniting principle with, like I just said, with the Catechism, the Catholic Church, this undisputed objective truth. Yeah, the Crusades was the peak. Yeah. The Protestants would never be able to muster up a crusade. Because the Lutherans have an issue with the Methodists, and the Methodists have issues with the Episcopalians. Same with the, the uh, Anglicans, and the non-denominationals are just like somewhat of, of a recent phenomena that came out of all these other ones. That basically, all of them eventually came out of the Catholic Church with Luther, and then out of Luther came all these other ones: Calvin, and then King Henry VIII with Anglicanism and whatnot, which created more, which created more, which created more. To what eventually it was non-denominationalism, which is like, okay, yeah, we just want to believe in God and just do what we want in our private life, which is mostly sleep around. <laughs> that, yeah. At least that's what it, uh, it seems. That's what, that's mostly how, how it seems. Is like we we believe in God and we want to be saved, but we don't want to have any rules placed on us. <clears throat> is mostly non-denominational Christianity. But what I'm saying is, just from a utilitarian standpoint, like God aside, if you were to look at Western civilization and say, how do we unite them? Because we're in the we're in the downfall. And I think that the, that's where this conversation is going is, why are people returning to the Catholic Church? It's because we are in a obvious decline. People are lost, too. From every metric, less people getting married, those people that are getting married, high high the highest chances of divorce ever, children adopting all of these sexual and gender disorders well i mean i think one of the worst thing is like when a catholic marries a protestant or a catholic marries or a christian marries into a, like a like to a muslim or like, people aren't thinking ahead like i couldn't imagine how that's going to work no wonder it leads to divorce how are you going to raise your kids yeah well at least in the catholic church there's a system to hope to try and mitigate that about with agreements of so you guys are going to raise the kids to be Catholics you're going to be going to church on Sundays and yes of course it just seems like a complete cluster they're, they're going to be but the thing is like they're taking oaths on this stuff the people yeah. that are involved in these marriages they're going they're telling the anointed successor of the apostles yes we're going to be going to church we're going to be raising our kids Catholic and then they don't that is on their soul that is a huge Yep. Huge disorder and sin. Uh, to be going through that process, I couldn't even imagine taking those vows and then not taking them seriously. It's unfortunate. But no, I'm just saying from a utilitarian standpoint, if you're thinking, how do I reunite the West? Because we're in an obvious decline from every metric, even just like economics, politics. And we literally have some guy that's like senile leading the West into a war with the East. It's almost like the full thing with like Nero at the end of like first Western civilization. So the Roman Empire was declining. Nero making fun of the institutions. He married a horse. And he actually had a nine year old husband. So like this is the kind of like degeneracy that happens at like the end of an empire. Now maybe we're not at that level, but we do have. We see a, very similar things. But we have literally a senile person being controlled and we are headed to literal world war this time the last world war is mostly just your the, the first two world wars were mostly just europe annihilating itself this one is like now we have people like china involved huge powers over there uh, russia brazil too. russia this the the primary uh mm -hmm, the three members here as well as the whole middle east iran 
Saudi Arabia and the other countries that we destroyed over there. But um, if but if you I'm, I'm just saying if you're like trying to reunite the West under anything, would you really go? Let's just choose non-denominationalism to unite the West to take on the world. Would you choose Lutheranism, Methodists, Methodism, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Episcopalianism? You're talking about these minor fractions because Protestantism only makes up the majority of Christians if you combined all of these warring sects of people together. And really, Protestantism has never been united. How, how can it? How are, you gonna, how are you going to combine or come together with you have 32,000? Yeah, it's only it's impossible. impossible. And so that leads us to the point of like, just from a utilitarian standpoint of like, how can we use Christianity to usefulness, which is not a Christian principle, but I'm just saying like from a, a usefulness point, what would be the most common sense thing to do to unite the West? Well, let's see. Let's choose the religion that actually created the West. It's the, it's the Catholic monks that were in the hillside whenever the, the Germanic barbarian attack happened in the Roman Empire. That led to the that they um, the works of Aristotle and Plato and all this were preserved in the monasteries and those monks. The first like science laboratories were actually really created in those monasteries where they drained the swamps. Most of Europe was a swamp, but a lot of people don't realize that. Um, and it's the monks that in their monasteries figured out ways to drain a lot of that land, create like more stable dams to drain that river into dams to have, so, so you can actually have civilization around that waterway and like use it productively. And this is actually all written. I'm just going to end up getting to my whole reading list over here. A lot of this was, a lot of this was written in how the Catholic church built Western civilization by Thomas Woods Jr. Go pick yourself up a copy of this. It's actually not even that long, but it talks about stuff like this, how, like step by step, 227 pages, how our whole civilization was created by the Catholic Church and just the institutions that it created with the orphanages, the hospitals, like the first ones of these, the charities, the schools, everything. And then creating the first scientific revolution that's ever happened in human history. So like the Roman Empire and the, Gre the Greco Roman world, they could only make it so far. And it only made it so far. And then it collapsed. They didn't have the scientific revolution that we had because we have the correct metaphysics that talks about how, like, our, our view of time and uh, the reality and, like, um, the human soul and just nature itself with uh, nature being measurable and everything. Everything's God created. Helped it set the groundwork at a metaphysical level to have the scientific revolution where no other civilization was able to have that because they didn't have the metaphysics right before you get to the physics. You have that metaphysic. Metaphysics just means before physics. Mm -hmm. You have to get that right before you end up looking into physics. One of the biggest issues, in my opinion, is that Protestantism in, in the Catholic Church, we're not taught that Protestantism, Protestant, Protestants aren't like going to hell. Mm. I mean, there is the, the theology of there is no salvation outside of the church, you know, but there, but we have a belief in purgatory where people are offered the chance. They're shown the full truth and whether or not they accept it or not. Because most point. people are living, most Protestants are living somewhat of a good life. Yeah. I mean, the West, it's just generally everything's been great up until recently. Things are still good for most people, but it's sort of like that frog boiling water. Like you, you don't really realize how bad things are getting. Like just, I'm just talking about like the, even like the rate that we're being poisoned. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you turn around, like everyone's obese. Everyone's got some sort of health issue, yeah, mentally, it. physically, something. And like, nobody really realized that because like 10 years ago, it's like, well, people were kind of like this. It's like, it's just a slow leak. It's like, well, now the inflation is this rate. Well, it was this rate last year. It's just this slow thing over the course of like a decade or two. So people just aren't totally aware of the actual decline, but being slowly boiled. Yeah, we're just being slowly boiled, um, which is why we end up getting these like these politicians that are running on a lot of these policies. Me being a fan of Kennedy and 
of course, Trump, mm. Vivek, anyone that's like not really a part of the system like, for Thanks the most part. Regime, yeah. But this just leads me to the point of the biggest lie of Protestantism. And I think there's a lot. Of, of course, the main one is they're denying the fact that there's like a church, a church, an institution that is like that creates the kings and the clerics. So it's like the people in the in the what we would not normally call the church and like the gov like the laity us we're part of the church. <clears throat> we just have more of a lady role of like we need to produce the next priests and we need to govern society. That's like the role of like the laity summarized. Um the Protestantism this is the part of like what I just call like the biggest lie is as Catholics we believe okay Jesus said he, he basically anointed Peter and the apostles to be the church and that God's chosen people status follows along that line to the apostles and those that follow the apostles and those that follow Christ. God's chosen people, the whole lineage of the Old Testament. And that those that follow the old ways, Jesus said, and I quote from Revelations 3, 6, he calls them the synagogue of Satan. Okay, this is where the big divide is. So as Catholics, we view anyone that calls themselves followers of Judaism today as Pharisees. Well, they're, they're the ones that crucified Christ, first off, and then they created their own Talmud 600 years later. In the 600s, 700s, their own Talmud under their own authority. They created their own book. So they crucified Christ. They created their own book under their own authority. And that is modern-day Judaism. Mm -hmm. is the followers of the Pharisees that crucified Christ and created their own Bible, their own Talmud, sorry. That is modern-day Judaism. That's the synagogue of Satan that Christ said in Revelations 3, 6. Whereas the Catholics are God's chosen people, okay? The Protestants literally flip the entire thing around. They end up saying that Catholics are going to hell, that we are satanic, and that the followers that crucified Christ are God's chosen people. That the people in Israel that we need to go over there and die for are God's chosen people. So it's literally a complete flip, a huge lie. And honestly, I don't even know about enough about the whole history because Luther was pretty anti-Semitic, like the first Protestant. So somehow it went from him to somewhere in the 1900s where all of a sudden... Protestantism became so heavy on loving Judaism, basically more than the successors of Peter and the apostles. To me, that is like the biggest problem. And and look, I was actually, whenever I was like in my early 20s, I was a basically a Zionist. I was in the military. I mean, most people were. Yeah, because that's all, that's all like Fox News and I know Daily Wire. I, I don't know when Daily return, Wire started. Yeah, they returned the Jews to the promised land. Yeah, it was that whole, there's like a mythology about it. Like, we got to defend God's chosen people. We got to go over there and we just got to do whatever it takes. Just die for them. But that's the, the amount of propaganda that I saw on television, I remember during that time. And it didn't help, help that the whole Iraq war and everything. But meanwhile, they were the ones that killed Jesus. The ones that killed Jesus and a lot, a lot of other crap. And, like, a lot of the Protestants are, like, perfectly fine to, like, donate all of this money. And all the commercials on, like, Fox News is, like, give money to these people. And it's all this, like, you know, these pedophiles in the Catholic Church. Like, screw them. Give it all to these Pharisees in the Middle East. But didn't Lutheran, Luther, I mean, didn't he say he didn't mean for this to go the way it went? Yeah. Wasn't it him? Pretty much anyone that starts any movement ends up saying something yeah. very similar. Um, I mean, even if you can go back to the whole, even Peter and Paul had an argument about yeah. following Jew, like Judaish role, like yeah. things that the Jews did. And then that's when what Jesus stepped in was like, well, that's the point of the church. No, no, no Jesus was gone at that point. Well, there they was, were still talking to him. Yeah. But there was like the appeal up to the authority That's the point of the Catholic church. Because if you would have had it the Protestants way, if there was a, just any argument, it would have been. Well, now you have the Church of St. John or yeah, yeah. Ch Church of John, Church of Matthew, the Church of Peter. Instead, there's one church that's constantly united. And then it, you appeal up. So, yeah, Peter and Paul had an, a disagreement. Um, and eventually Peter actually sided with Paul. He realized that he was in the wrong, mm -hmm. even though he was like the main authority. Yeah. 
Um, it was the whole thing of circumcision and following the uh, Jewish law. Because Peter thought that all Jews, anyone that was still going to be a Christian needed yeah, to be circumcised. Like, Paul, uh, Paul went out there and converted all these older people, a bunch of... He went to, he went to Greece. Oh, really? Um, yeah, like St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Like, yeah, that's he, like a Greek. And he said that's convert, like they converted all these people to be Catholic. And then Peter was like, okay, you need to get them all circumcised. Yeah, and it's like, oh, hold up. These yeah. guys are grown adults. Yeah. I don't know if we need to be doing this right now. Yeah, and first off, that was a Jewish tradition. Yeah, from the Old Testament. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's just, I think that's like one of the biggest lies that people would fall into. But <clears throat> we can just move on from that and talk about Catholicism is, is historical. Kind of just summarizing a lot of this. It's the first 1,500 years of Western civilization, essentially. Um, so it's historical. The, all Protestant churches are, are just being created in the last hundred years, most of them in the last hundred years, Lutheranism, Calvinism. I mean, there's probably ones being created right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's just no way you could unite around something like that. Catholicism is what the apostles created. We kind of just we kind of talked about that. That's literally the the church is like an institution that was created in the Bible. It kept Catholicism has the deposit of faith, which is essentially the duty of the church to interpret the deposit of faith and defend it. And that is essentially most of what's in the, cat, the, the catechism. A lot of this just cannot be changed. A pope cannot come out and say, okay, gay marriage is okay. Protestants do do that. Yeah. They you. you cannot do that in the Catholic church. Well, they're the ones that have gay priests, lesbian priests, or whatever you even call a priest that's a woman. Priestess, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Basically, <laughs> they have yeah. LGBT people, and then it's funny because, at least from what I've seen, people think that oh, you're Catholic, you're okay with all this stuff. I'm like, because Catholics are under Christians. It's sad that I have to tell people that I am Catholic. I never even say I'm Christian because, because I don't Protestants even. Protestants have ever destroyed the word the term Christian. Christian, which is like. If someone, also as soon a as they, yeah, as soon as someone says that they're Christian. Because whenever they say Christian, that means like you are totally tolerant of absolutely yeah. everything, and you don't actually care about. Your That's faith. why I always have to, I always have to hit him with I'm Catholic, and it's like okay, oh, okay, yeah. So the, yeah. there's a code of law that you yeah. follow, and that's just another thing, another booky thing here. Another thing that united the West, the thick boy, was the canon, canon law. So at the beginning of Western civilization, you had one religion, one pope, one law. One language, Latin. You even had like one architecture, even Gothic architecture. One people group. You could probably go on and on with all this, just like one, just of how united it was. And of course, then you ended up having the splintering and breaking apart. But there's that yearning in the Western man's soul of we need to eventually get back to the point where Western civilization is united under a lot of these same principles. Understanding that a lot of things shift and change. But yeah, what you're saying about the whole Christian, Protestants like just hijacked the whole term Christian. And now mm -hmm. Christian is like a despicable term that basically just means, oh, you don't love me. You're, you're not being very Christian. It's like Jesus, whenever he, he thought that people in the temple were not being, you know, yeah. who they should be, he pulls out, a, he fastened a whip and started whipping people. Yeah. Those are the verses that uh, aren't talked about as much. Because it's not, well, they're the, it's not they're liberal, usually the, it's not tolerant. Christians are always using, oh, have you been saved? They, they, most of the time you can tell who, like just by even having a conversation with a Protestant. Like I just had a conversation with someone at work. Before she was, like I let her say what she wanted to say. And I was like, in my mind, I was like, I already know she's a Protestant. Just by the language they use. It's yeah. usually like so. It's so like, like bleeding heart. Yeah. Like I'm not here intellectually. No. I'm here because I was either born into it yeah. or it has no like, question. It's like very feely. Like I'm just going to go to like some huge, massive church and just kind of like, yeah, it's like Same, a drug trip. Yeah. <clears throat> like a DMT trip. <laughs> That's um, not how it is. Yeah. Go, go to, to a Catholic, Catholic, Catholic church and you will see how it actually is. Like, yeah, the, the, the correct Latin mass worship or like, um, like a Byzantine type where there's yeah. incense and 
the, all the smells chant, and the bells. Yeah. And then right on the next thing, so yeah, we have the deposit of faith that cannot be changed. Like, I have no worry in the world that Pope Francis, no matter how bad the Pope is, he can't come out and say, we're going to allow gays. It, 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 he might as well come out and say, gravity is not going to exist in three days. It's like, literally, yeah. it is, goes against nature. It goes against, like, essentially, and that doesn't go against the deposit of faith because that's a, that's a scientific matter. Mm-hmm. This is a faith matter, but it's just, the same principle applies. Um, next, just talking about the interpretation of the Bible. The Catholics created the Bible in the first couple hundred years. That was my phone. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we created the canon of Scripture. So the Catholic Church was there for a couple hundred years without the Scripture. And then the Bible was created. And then the Protestants changed the Bible in the 1500s. Get rid of seven books, alter a lot of verses, saying that uh, Luther added alone after, you know, there's that whole controversy on faith alone thing, but. You with no action. Well, like, it, 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 that basically just proves the whole f- Bible alone false because there was no Bible in the first couple hundred years. Yeah, I mean, the sad thing is. They're basically hate, calling the, the admit, apostles. There not. are Protestants that know the Bible better than I do because that's all they read. They yeah. can, they can, but they have no they idea like where every it came verse. From. Yeah, they can say every verse and interpret it any way they want to. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, they spend all their time on that, but then they don't even look into where it even came from. Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest thing. Like they, they, they want to have no authority. Like no one tells me what to believe about this whole thing. So they want themselves to be the only authority of this book. That they don't even know like where it came from. Mm-hmm. They think. Like Luther created it in the 1500s when Jesus died in the year like 33. Big time frame there oh, yeah. where things can go wrong. Like if something came out like a year ago in today's age where everything is like video recorded, documented, it's still like hard to believe it, mm-hmm. let alone 1500 years. Yeah. Um, Many generations. Yes, yeah, so the biblical canon is a whole other thing. In Catholicism, we have the Catechism and the Lives of the Saints. I forgot to bring that one down here. Um, just as, just as like the very foundation for just a great start in the Catholic Church and spirituality in general is just the Catechism and the in the lives of the saints, um, which is I'll get to the book suge- suggestions here in a minute, but those are other great ones. Yeah, and it all comes back to the authority and hierarchy. So yeah, my my just suggestion is that like everyone should be following the path that Alan Harrelson from the Pipe Cottage has taken which is and and there's the quote by um i think it was cardinal uh what's his name i even commented this on his thing uh newman i can't remember he said whenever you study history you basically cease to be protestant is essentially the the quote maybe i'll throw up on the screen i mean there's actually a lot of quotes about that but just looking into enough and watching the civilization decline at some point you have to realize me going to another Protestant denomination is not going to be the answer. We need to be going back into our theology. Well, I think what led him to Catholicism, he's a history teacher. Yeah, and as soon as he, and whenever I watched his videos, he said he's a history teacher, and the things he was gonna, talking yeah, about, I'm like, long. he's going to be in, yep. he's going to be in Rome. There's certain minute. people that I watched, I'm like, give it time. I knew Elliot Hulse was going to be yep. Catholic because he was getting to that same realm. I'm like, dude, any day, yeah, he's going to be. When on you July start Mass. questioning things, and you just read, the, and you find the, you know. Basically, I think Protestants, at least the people I've talked to, they're closed-minded well, because they don't know most of them are because they don't want to change their lifestyle. Well, I mean, yeah, which is everyone's problem. Because as soon as you start to read, like I would hate to like change my, because, yeah, yeah. W- w- but there's no be- going back from what you learn from what you read in those books. There's no way you can turn your eye, turn a blind eye to what you've read. Well, especially if, one way. if your interpretation of the Bible and everything. And what you've been told is that the Catholic Church is like Satan's church. That is like putting a lot on that. Like even like Alan Harris. There's a lot of people that won't believe. believe. He was talking about like how his father was like, you've been deceived. What do you mean by that? Like what do you mean? His father was saying that to him, Alan Harrison. Whenever he's like, I'm going to join the Catholic Church. And he looks at him and he's like, you've been deceived. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, They have a hatred. Of the Catholic Church. See, that's what's crazy to me. Like it, it's almost like ingrained to them, like the people of Israel are good, the Pharisees, mm. and the people that started the church are like 
literally satanic. I don't remember him saying that. Yeah, yeah he That's mentioned the podcast. There. I mean, Dry Creek Granger and him, their friendship will be tested over the next couple of months because he is a devout Protestant. But Dry Creek Wrangler seems like he's actually studied history a bit too. Maybe he might not, not, not be the long. same level. Yeah. I think the, the Southern thing is kind of it's hard. holding people back because I feel like they have that attachment to that culture of like we are just free just give me my gun and my bible and that's all i need mm-hmm. and i eventually you got to get past that because that's some like low that's what IQ i mean by like civilization sh- stuff closed-minded yeah it's like they don't want to reach out because they're i feel like they're scared of what they're actually going to find and which makes sense because yeah your whole worldview is is held together at some very some very basic idea mm-hmm. and if that basic idea is that the Catholic Church is like Satan's church. And I just need my Bible. Like once you change, like all your decisions are based on that. So if you're working a way down and you have to change this, that means your whole life has to start to change. Well, yeah, that's why I don't understand. Like I feel like any most human beings, wouldn't you want to find the actual truth? Like I, I like there's part of me unless like, you're when, into it. When I'm like even enough. discovering anything, I'm like I want to <clears throat> I want to read until there's no more reading to go. Like I want to find the actual truth. Like the knowledge behind a certain thing, I could imagine just having like a Protestant Bible, like this is all I care about, and this is all I've, I don't fur, I don't want to further learn or um, educate myself on anything else. I couldn't imagine doing that. Yeah, because there's so many good works by Catholics over the last two thousand years. That'll be a whole other video, but just the Catholic spirituality is so deep on the on the levels that you can get. That's another thing too. I could imagine just reading the Bible. I know. We all we all say like, the Bible is pretty broad. There is other things out there that explain things so much better. Yeah. And a lot of Protestants are like, they they even question Mary like, oh, I was reading the the, the with the uh, the Mary book. What's the name of that one? Oh, uh, Saint. Uh, What's the name Saint, of the book? Oh, Saint Louis de Montfort's yeah. True Devotion to Mary. Yeah, and I was reading that work in the Protestant girl that was like will you pray to mary yeah and that's and that's they are literally brainwashed into a lot of the things you pray to the saints you pray to mary you give all your money to some like pedophile like yeah random you know pope guy which is that popes and bishops are in the bible it's like the whole old testament is creating a priesthood why would god all of a sudden just go i created this whole thing completely smash the entire no, thing to me. Yeah, yeah just yeah just this was all for nothing the prayers to the saints and to Mary is to just you you explained it perfectly well. It's like to yeah, praying through them as like it, Protestants are perfectly fine saying, "Hey, uh, my mom's got cancer. Can you pray for her?" Yeah, why would you? Pray but they to won't say being? they won't pray to a saint. To, they won't ask a saint to do that for them to inter- intercede. Who they knows in heaven yeah. Yeah, to intercede. So there's all these, these issues there, but yeah, we just hope that more people become Catholic. Because there's definitely a movement towards that. That realm, because like if you just do enough research, all roads lead to Rome, is the saying. That's a great saying. And we've all, if you if you were like born and raised in Western civilization, some ancestor of yours was Catholic. The Catholic Church was, yeah, I think it was Hilary Belloc that said that Europe is Catholic. And no, Catholic is Europe, and Europe is Catholic, or something like that. Um, I know I'm so bad at like I know these quotes, but I can never get them like that. That might have been perfect. I, I got something never... like that. Because paganism, like, <clears throat> it died in, like, before, like, the year 1000 but with the Vikings. It was pretty much, like, the last bastion yeah, of they, paganism. Yeah, they uh, converted many of them, many of the Vikings. So until, from, so, like, the year 1000 until literally the present, it's been, well, so from the year 1000 to the year 1500, everyone <laughs> was Catholic. And then people started to become Protestant with Luther and it's been a slow fall since. But <clears throat> everything eventually leads back to Rome. Now let's get into some book suggestions here. Like I said, Catechism of the Catholic Church. Th- these are just normal books like like Catholic 101. I have a whole nother like section, multiple sections of like political Catholicism, economic Catholicism, spirituality specifically. I have a whole, I have a bunch of books on that that I'm, I'm like really into. But basically, just getting into Catholicism, Catechism of the Catholic Church. I'm just going to turn to a random page here. The 
you know, so, so just talking about the, the makeup of the church. The graces of baptism, the forgiveness of sins, the necessity of baptism. And these are well thought out quotes throughout the Bible in here. It talks about well, the theology of angels, purgatory, everything is in here. Get yourself a copy. Of course, a Catholic Bible. I got my St. Joseph's edition. I don't ever hear anyone talk about this version. I like it, though. Beautiful. Huge, beautiful. Um, it's the Catholic one, so it has all the books. What's the main one that everyone talks about? Um, I was afraid Alex The traditional Catholic one is called the Dewey Reigns edition of yeah. the Bible. That... I read a whole book on the, the purest... Maybe that's the one I have. The purest interpretation and how it's been interpreted from its original language into German, into English, or whatnot, is the Dewey Rames. It is very... I wouldn't say that that's for kids because the I think the, the verbiage is very... Uh, it's, it's not modern at all. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of that ancient language that I know that you and I had a problem with it whenever we were younger. Like yeah, the, like a lot the of the vowels. And the, yeah. It's very, yeah, it's basically a whole Bible like that. So as an adult, it might make more sense. But as a kid, I know that I personally would have a problem mm-hmm. reading the Dewey Rames. As a kid. Now I'd be fine. So we've got the Catechism. We've got the Holy Bible, Catholic Edition. Code of Canon Law. This one is less important. This version here specifically has Latin on one side and Eng- English on the other. I just kind of have this as... That'd be cool. More of like a reference. Because Western civilization was founded on, you know, a specific type of law that kind of came out of the whole Roman tradition of administration. So this is the Latin and English version. It's interesting to have because the Vatican, you know, follows this law. The priests in every country follow the specific law what i get for my confirmation whenever i'm a confirmation sponsor for people i actually get them uh why we are catholic by trent horn small little book i'm a huge fan of this because very simple it talks about every topic for like two pages and the font like it's it's small it's small it's nothing crazy like seven you know age 14 plus easily read this why Western, uh, what, how the Catholic Church built Western civilization. Huge fan of this book. This is more leaving the realm of spirituality, legislation, all the ones that I just mentioned, and more of the historical reasons why the West is Catholic. Why it was created under the Catholic Church, and uh, why that's sort of like our destiny to return to the return of the king. You know, the, we... we uh, I'm definitely a monarchist. I think that there needs to be a return of a Catholic monarch at some point, but that honestly can't really be done until people start becoming Catholic. Or the collapse. Yeah, or the collapse of civilization. <laughs> this book actually really got me... One of the first books that I read whenever I started my journey into really digging into the Catholic Church is the Ecumenical Councils of the Catholic Church. That sounds very boring. However... I don't even know. How did you say the first word? The Ecumenical Councils of the Catholic Church. I don't even pronounce This that. is very interesting because it just goes back to the very beginning of like the, the Ecumenical Councils are whenever the main people in the church come together for a council. You have the greatest minds in the world coming together for extended periods of time with all their documents and different authority levels of like how we figure out what is true. And they make agreements on these things and that's how the church progresses forward. Not that's the Catholic version. The Protestant is, oh, I disagree with you. I'm going to start mm-hmm. another church. God forbid. Then you got the uh, the encyclicals. This is just one version of it. And this is just, this is very uh, thin. There's a lot of encyclicals. This was pretty cool, though. This is just basically the Pope talking to the priests over the course of 2,000 years of, like, the different trends and things that are going on and, like, the, you know, the church's reaction to a lot of things going on. The Industrial Revolution, the Enlightenment, all the different heresies, 
Paul talked about in here. This does not have all of them. I don't. I don't think it has much of Pope Leo the Thirteenth, because uh, he wrote so many encyclicals. And then just one on the mass. A hundred questions about the mass. I really enjoyed this whenever I was looking into just basic Catholic questions. And of all these books, what do you think they should start with? Besides um, the Bible. Because I think the Bible is too hard. I think the Bible should be definitely there to read over time. But like, if you were going to get into Catholicism, what would be the number one book? If, if, you, uh, if you have a question on like the, theological things, then the Catechism. Like, if you're thinking, I don't want to join the Catholic Church because of their view of purgatory, but you might want to read the Catechism because the Catechism lays out why we believe in this stuff. The next option would be why we're Catholic, which literally summarizes it in a normal, mm -hmm. modern language, the theological stuff. If you're if you're thinking about, like, almost like I started this whole thing off on, like, utilitarianism of, like, from a political, economic, like, where is Western civilization? This is the book for you. Because so, so how the Catholic Church built Western civilization. That's where my interests typically go. Um, I was I've always been Catholic, so whenever I read this, it just kind of a fit. So I didn't know have to I didn't have to deal with like the theological philosophical issues at first. I just read this, and it all made sense. That that's where we came from. Yeah, that's plus we went to Catholic school, so yeah. we didn't have to really question anything. Yeah, so that's, uh, I don't even know how many books I was, but that's just some book re recommendations for getting into the Catholic Church. I've read out all these, I don't, I don't know how many times. Th this is like, I've read these pretty early on. It's been a several years now. This is just like the entrance. Mm -hmm. This is get you, get you going to the church, taking your faith seriously, and then you get into the other realms of like, Saint books. Okay, so, yeah, the saint books. Like, I want to take my spirituality further. I got another five to ten books on the best saints of, like, the last 2,000 years on There's deep spirituality. Ones. The Desert Fathers. Oh, my gosh, yeah. And then the political economic stuff of, like, okay, so now we have a whole Catholic population. Now what are we supposed to do? Now we move towards politics, and we got to rule politics and the economy, and all things have to be ordered towards Christ. Like Peter and Paul, they didn't just go, we're just going to convert a bunch of people and die. They went to Rome. They wanted to convert the empire, the emperor. And so that gets Christianity involved in politics at that point, and economics and getting rid of slavery and all these kind of things. So this podcast dragging out long here. So yeah, hold on. I'm going to stand up because, like I said, eventually we'll get our the retro threads put up. But we started, like I like, introduced in the last podcast, we're making sure it's. And I'm going to stand up because I just printed off this one today. We're from Pittsburgh. Yeah, even though I'm wearing a Phillies hat. But, yeah, just some designs that we make up. Yeah, so eventually we'll get our website put up. We'll have our retro threads. We'll have, you know, some of our, I mean, you guys probably wouldn't want them, but Chuba Enterprises and, I mean, 80s retro, rock and roll stuff, outdoor stuff, our Frontier Outfitters. But, yeah, we'll have, like, uh, an Etsy page, Venmo, all that stuff. So, PayPal, so we'll be able to actually purchase some of our merch. So, yeah. Yeah, we're getting there, so. Slow and steady. We'll slowly be, slowly be wearing some of the merch in our, our videos. Yeah, we yeah. wore them a couple of times. You'll, you'll see, like, you yeah. see our videos. But, so, make um, sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Last time we think about the video, watch some of our previous videos. And, uh, yeah. yeah, catch you later. See you later. Peace.